while Orestes is getting started with the screen share, I'll explain the context of this topic a tiny bit. Um, this is a case study we did on news coverage of mis- and disinformative narratives related to Greta Thunberg in the latter part of 2019. As you know, the climate strikes were happening and she was really, really rising to fame. And we did this case study across a few different platforms, but we did a lot of the work, you know, separately looking through Push Shift, looking at Crimson Hexagon, looking at Crowd Tangle as a way to sort of prepare our research questions and mindsets for this multi-platform topic interface. So a lot of this research actually helped influence how we thought about multi-platform topics. And with that, I think the screen share is up. So I'll let Restus take over. Thank you, Aska. Uh, also, you are the master of this study, so feel free to hop in if you want to add uh, something or the, to, to, to describe something better. So I think that uh, um, it's, uh, since you saw the technical details about how the topic matter functions, it might be interesting to see, okay, someone can use all these tools and uh, sophisticated uh, um, properties what can we get out of it? Um, and this study is really a, a nice way to see the possibilities and limits of topic mapper, especially in a multi-platform setting. So misinformation and disinformation is in hype. I don't know if it's in hype, but even more and more researchers are studying social media and news to understand how it emerges, when it emerges, who is it influenced, who sets or creates misinformation, when is it the disinformation, and so on. And this case study is about Greta Thunberg, as Aska mentioned, and uh, tries to investigate misinformation related to her since the beginning of Fridays for Future in Sweden in 2018, when she became famous in the first place, till 2019, in September, when Greta Thunberg talked in front of all politicians uh, in uh, New York City. Um, and uh, it's based on a multi-platform topic and the data that were taken into consideration uh, for the analysis are, are uh, news stories, um, uh, post, uh, then how this, um, I'm sorry, I need to correct. I think data are also combined separately from Media Cloud, no? Ask her. Yeah, that's correct. So Next we time. first we first tested a lot of different searches on Media Cloud through Explorer, and then we created a topic there. And we translated those query terms as best we could across the three other data sources, CrowdTangle, Crimson Hexagon, and Push Shift. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, we start out with the best of intention for these are the narratives and search terms we want to look at, but you run into the fact that you can only use certain search parameters on certain platforms. So in some cases, the syntax was changed or something like that. Um, something that I'll also add is we initially started with a really broad search for just Greta's name. So in Media Cloud, we used Greta Thunberg in quotation marks because that would be the media convention. On the other three platforms, we actually searched for just the word Greta to get our original data set. And then we did a lot of cleaning to remove specific types of Greta related noise. And then we ran these narrative queries against those data sets. Thanks. Um, um, I would like, like also to mention that um, it's uh, because misinformation it's really interesting to study it across platforms and you don't and um, you need to sometimes to have news media, social media data um, and so on. Um, I think CrowdTangle is also open to researchers. You can't just create an account, but if you contact them, if I'm not mistaken, they, they are open to invite researchers to use the platform. Crimson Hexagon is not open, but Push Shift is also freely accessible. It has also a very well-documented API. So if you want to use these platforms as well, I think it is possible for the research for misinformation or any other topic. Um, so as Aska said, said, there were six main themes uh, uh, identified themes that uh, uh, wanted to discredit Greta Thunberg 
Um, one was related uh, to, to the fact that uh, she has Asperger's. There was another story relating her with the Antifa movement. Um, another narrative uh, was uh, framing her as a puppet of her family of Swedish organizations and so on. And there was another narrative that uh, stated that uh, Th Thunberg was exploited by, uh, by companies that aim to create profit uh, out of uh, green policies. So uh, these uh, six, uh, six uh, five narratives were searched across uh, the platforms. And as you can see, uh, we have uh, four different pie charts that show how often, how much these narratives appeared on the platforms. Of course, narratives doesn't mean that each post or submission or news story supported the, the misinformation or the conspiracy theory, but they talk about it, okay? And what it is really uh, happens a lot in multi-platform analysis is that different issues appear on different proportions on them. So here you can see, for example, that the narrative of the uh, news stories that, or submissions talking about the mental ability of Greta Thunberg were prevalent in Media Cloud and in uh, Reddit. While on Twitter and even on Facebook, we see an increase, for example, of story related um, to Soros. And they forgot to mention that one narrative is that Thunberg is working with George Soros and the Open Society Foundation and so on. Uh, and we can say that 5% more or less of the content generated in the open web, in Twitter, in Facebook and Reddit, is related to this narrative. So these narratives really appear and people discuss about them and so on. So they have a significant appearance. Now, what's the, the potential of the multi-platform topic and why is it good to use it? Since you're able um, to go back to news stories and to see when did they appear, you can also find, hey, um, did, did, does a new, is a news story diffused on social media platforms as well? and when and, and so on. Of course, in this case, we have also the rest of the data sets for coming from other sources that uh, help the multi-platform analysis. But on this news level, you can do the same thing um, with Reddit and Facebook and so on. Um, so you can see here that, um, for example, the mental ability narrative the first Reddit uh, comment appeared in December 2018, and uh, it happened uh, on Red a, a user that was banned also, so a user that was creating conspiracy theories. We had in January then the first conspiracy, the first a news story mentioning uh, this case, uh, this uh, narrative, associating this narrative with Greta Thunberg, that was the Daily Stormer. Um, and then we see also the appearance of the events uh, the, of the narrative in other, in Facebook um, and in Twitter. And as you can see in the, in the um, plot, um, narratives were significantly low up to the point of the, uh, of the weeks before the United Nations Assembly where media were talking increasingly about the climate process protests and Greta Thunberg, and these narratives also took traction. Um, um, what is it? Yes. I'll just chime in with something really quick, which is that when you're looking yeah. at push shift to data, push shift actually treats Reddit comments and Reddit submissions as two different things. So when you're looking at Reddit data, there are two parameters for that. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's really important because it is a different type of data on Reddit as well. Um, and what it is interesting in such analysis and when someone does analysis and misinformation is usually you want to go back to data and read them and understand who shares something, when, and so on. And what it is really common in misinformation is that um, misinformation is, gets more traction when it, it reaches a multiplier. What is a multiplier? It might be an influencer on social media, a journalist, and a legacy outlet 
and if that information uh, gets cited by them, then it starts having much more reach in general. And in that case, for example, this uh, mental ability narrative was cited by Michael uh, Knowles, a, a, a conservative uh, a journalist from Fox News, and that helped uh, the um, narrative to take traction. Uh, and similar uh, dynamics we can see also for the other narratives, for example, the Antifa narrative that was also um, uh, started interestingly from Germany uh, with uh, um, in the German Reddit topics and was also used a lot by the German party Alternative für Deutschland. It is the alt-right party of Germany. Um, and uh, so we found the same narrative discussed in different countries and different uh, social groups. So we see that misinformation is not centralized, but appears in different uh, cases, and then it becomes uh, bigger and bigger. And we can see here the same dynamics uh, coming close to the uh, UN assembly. Um, and we should mention here that in this case, there was also um, a case of uh, uh, a multiplier. This was uh, a user who posted this picture with Greta Thunberg wearing an Antifa shirt that was later than the first appearance of misinformation, actually, in a totally different context. And this picture was taken by uh, uh, groups and stated that Greta Thunberg is an Antifa member and so on, which she later denied and removed the specific picture as well. Uh, from her account. And uh, the, um, we see similar dynamics again with George, uh, with the associating Greta Thunberg with the George Soros and the Open Society Foundation. This time the first tweet appears in Sweden about this narrative and also it got traction in Germany. Um, and what happened also here, there were collages in social in media where uh, there was a, a, a French parody this time that uh, put uh, Thunberg with Soros together, if I'm not mistaken, Aska, can you confirm it? No, that's correct. Oh, exactly. Do you want to do you want to pop over to the findings? Um, yeah. Just to sort of being sensitive to time for folks? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. People can always look back at the slides for more detail about that case study too. Okay, okay, to finish. And I am it was the and uh, what happened was that um, uh, the 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 parody was taken as misinformation by a lot of users and spread it furthermore. So uh, the findings of the study, you can check also the other narratives, is that uh, there was an increase of misinformation related to Thunberg. The more popular she went, which makes sense. But what was interesting is that different platforms contributed in different ways for its narrative, different multipliers existed in its different case, in, in its different narrative, as well as that um, uh, there were a lot of information collages and information misinterpretation uh, that resulted to the diffusion of the narratives, um, as well as that uh, always, even in the Thunberg's case, she was associated with no needles for social groups. Yeah, that was the case study.